Hi, this is Mariah Gullo from The Hollywood Reporter, and we're in studio today with Miss America, Nia Franklin. <laughs> Hi. Hi, how are you? I'm doing well. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Have you even had a moment to sleep? <laughs> yes, I have. <laughs> but it's, it's really funny. The first night, I only got two hours of sleep after I Wow. Yeah, it was yeah, a late we, night. <laughs> we've had some winners of The Voice on before, and they mm. have the same thing. They end up not sleeping no. at all. Uh, but tell me a little bit about the moment you were crowned. Yeah, so um, made it to top five, and it, from there, um, you know, the fourth runner it was called, and so on and so forth. And then it's just me there with Miss Connecticut. And she was so excited that she could barely contain herself, but I'm over here trying to contain myself. So it was it was very interesting. She was just very excited for me, it seemed like. Mm -hmm. And she said, you got this. And I was like, we're going to be great. And we kind of held our arms up together at one point, like we like just sharing the moment. Mm -hmm. Because Carrie Ann took so long to announce Bridget's name. I like really, that. it took a long time. I noticed that. I mean, we were about to die up there. But she finally got to it. And... Um, it was just an incredible moment that it felt like all of my hard work had paid off and it just felt like a moment that I could, you know, just take it all in. I was definitely in shock, but I knew in that moment that I was going to make sure that this is the best year of my life so far and that I do as much as I can for this organization this year. Wonderful, and I'm dying to know all of the things that you plan to do this year. But before I do, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the new rules. What was it like to have kind of a new competition where there were a couple of different changes in the competition? Yeah. I really enjoyed it. However, going into it, I was a little nervous because it's new. And mm -hmm. when you are involved in an organization for X amount of years, for me, this was my third year being involved with the organization, you're used to the way things go. So yeah, that's why I was a little nervous. But when we got there, things were kind of explained to us more. And at that point, you know, I just decided to go with it. We, there was no swimsuit this year, and mm -hmm. that was something that I came to grips with a little bit before the pageant or the mm -hmm. competition. But being there and not having to worry about being bloated that week from eating too much <laughs> or anything like that, it was really nice because that yeah. can be stressful for a lot of girls. Um, just you know, having that extra pressure on top of making sure you're speaking well and present presentable on stage. So it was a little bit of pressure off, but at the same time, because it was new, it was it was kind of like a give and take, I would say. Mm -hmm. What was the most difficult thing about the competition? What challenged you the most? I would say uh, just n probably the either evening gown portion or the on stage question. Talent usually comes pretty mm. easily for me because I've been doing performing my whole life, not in front of national TV, but I, I felt ready for that portion of competition. But um, yeah, anything when it, when it deals with just being a good communicator, we all want to be the best we can be. And so there's a 10 minute private interview with the judges that happens. And for that, you really have to make sure you're engaging them. And I, I would say, even aside from stage competition, that 10 minute private interview, that is so important because mm. a lot of people in the pageant world will say, interview is not one on stage, it's one in that interview room. Because oh, wow. if you can really get those judges to understand the type of person you are and the things you want to do in your community and what you want to bring to the title should you win, that's so they really see the real you. And it can be hard to do that in 10 minutes. Sure. And so that, that was really my goal and what I was most focused on tackling and doing well. Yeah, it's such a limited amount of time and you need to get across everything. Did so you find yourself <laughs> talking really fast? Or? I didn't. I, <laughs> I, um, I was very calm. Oh, the whole week, good. I mean, I really just like prayed for peace and serenity that week. Mm -hmm. And walking into the interview, that's what I tried to embody. And I was able to speak eloquently and to just share the things that I wanted to share. And the thing is, you're not going to be able to save the world in 10 minutes. You're not going to be able to tell them all about your life in 10 minutes. So you just try to get the most important things that matter to you. Mm -hmm. For me, that was music and advocating for the arts. That was sharing my story with my dad who uh, had cancer and I was a stem cell donor. Mm -hmm. And he's doing well today. And then it was also sharing what I wanted to do as Miss America during my year and how I would do it. Mm -hmm. So if I could just get those three things across then I knew I would probably have a, a solid interview. Right. Well, let's tackle those three mm -hmm. things. First, let's talk about the arts. Yes. You sang uh, from an opera from La Boheme. Yeah. A, a, an operatic yeah. song. Mm -hmm. What is the way to say that? An operatic song? It would be called, it's called an aria. So an, an aria. Opera, okay. So an opera, in the most classical art operas, uh, you have what's called arias and recitatifs. Arias are the song that's more so the lyrical, melodic song that the character sings, and it's where she's he or she is commentating on how they're feeling, mm -hmm. more so, and, and they're reacting. But the 
recitative is the actual dialogue and that happens between characters. It can be a monologue that happens and it's more speechy singy. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of the difference between the two. So I chose an aria, which is um, usually more entertaining because it's more melodic. Mm. And you know, opera is kind of, um, it's a very traditional form of art. Mm -hmm. uh, why is it important for you to kind of keep that tradition alive? Well, it's a it's a part of who I am. In high school, I decided that I wanted to be a music composer and I wanted to go to school for that. But in order to do that, I needed an instrument to play. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I, I played piano by ear, but I didn't want to do it for college because I wanted to more so focus on my compositional skills. And if I would have chosen piano, that would have been something I would have had to work at you know, twice as hard. And it would have just been too much when I already kind of knew how to play piano. Mm -hmm. So I decided to choose an instrument that would be more challenging for me and something that I hadn't really done before, and that was singing classically. So I decided to take lessons, and that was a, a great deal of my life. I mean, from the years of 2014 to 20, I'm sorry, 2010 to 2015, I was taking opera lessons and classical oh. voice lessons. And I think it was important to showcase that as a young woman, as an African-American woman, you can sing opera. And that, that mm. might be a stereotype that, you know, black people don't sing opera. And I wanted to break down those stereotypes. Yeah. And so it was important to do that on national TV for me. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about the other facet, your family. Um, how do you plan on keeping in touch with your family while you're on touring across the country for the next year? Yeah. Well, um, I would say just phone call, only a phone call away, FaceTime, and any time that I am in the area, they may, they may come visit me. Uh, I know that I will possibly be having some bookings in North Carolina where I'm from, being that I went to school there and being that I competed in North Carolina actually for two years. So I'm hoping that I'll be there sometimes and the other times either they'll come to, to see me or we can FaceTime. Mm -hmm. And how's your dad doing? He's doing well. He is um, really happy. He's so happy that I won and he just celebrated his five year anniversary of the stem cell transplant that we did. So nice. he's getting stronger every day. Wonderful, wonderful. Okay, so now let's talk about your tour. What is the plan? What does Miss America do for the next year? Everything under the moon, under the sky. So everything from going to schools and speaking with children about our organization and kind of planting that seed for young girls and even young boys that may want to get involved with the organization one day because even though right now they wouldn't be able to compete, they could always volunteer. This is a volunteer-based organization. Mm -hmm. And also it's really great because this organization promotes education and scholarships. Mm -hmm. So going in and talking about that, singing at, the, I'm actually the national ambassador for the Children's Miracle Network Hospital. That mm -hmm. comes with the title of Miss America every year. Um, oh, it's, a tr it's been ongoing for some time now. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'll be doing, going in and, and seeing the kids that are going through things with their families. And that's something I'm really actually looking forward to, being that I've been there with my father. And I can really relate and and uh, empathize with them when it comes to that. And uh, I am a singer, songwriter, and composer, so I want to spend this year also working on my craft too and making sure that that doesn't go to the wayside and going to different events. Um, I, I hope to be able to go to the Met um, Opera at some point and mm. see the opera. I, I was able to go last year before I was Miss New York or anything, and uh, it, it's a really fantastic to, to be in such a historic hall where Leontine Price and Renee Fleming have um, sang, and so I'm really excited about that. Amazing. Okay, let's talk a little bit about being Miss New York. Mm. Uh, what are the unique things about New York State that you kind of bring, bring to the Miss America program? The Miss New York title for me was a sense of freedom, I would say. You have no box, no limits when you're Miss New York because it's it's really the cultural capital of the world, so mm -hmm. it's so diverse. You can kind of push limits on things that you wear and things that you may things you may go to, different appearances. I actually but right before I went to Miss America, I was invited to go to the champion grand opening in Soho, the the clothing line. Mm -hmm. And so little things like that that just kind of kind of gives you a different experience than than other states may have being in New York. And it kind of prepares you for all the different types of events you'll be going to during your year because you never know what you're gonna get booked for. <laughs> And as you kind of go across all the 50 states, is there anything that you are hoping to see? Is there any, anything that you're hoping will bring the country together? 
Yeah, I would say that for me, it's it, it goes back to good communication. So that's one thing I'll be doing all year, speaking to people, speaking to different, even administrators. I am really passionate about making sure that uh, children have access to the arts, and a lot of it does come down to funding. And while mm -hmm. that is an issue that can't be solved overnight, going to Washington, D.C. and lobbying and using my voice as Miss America is something I'm really, really excited about. And also just making sure that little girls and little boys have someone they can kind of look up to and and aspire to be one day, to, to see the things that I'm doing, going to get my education, being a helping hand when it comes to even being a stem cell donor for my father, because that's something that I think more people should be educated on as well. Mm -hmm. So when you want to go to Washington and uh, convince them that the arts should be well funded for children, how are you going to convince them? Why are the arts so important for children? Well, they make you feel included. For me, it was being a minority at my school and feeling out of place a lot of the time, and that can lead to self-esteem issues. But thankfully, I did have the arts in my school um, all the way through high school, and it always made me feel like I had a place, like I had a family, a voice. And so many students that aren't even minorities need that same thing to be successful in school on a mental level. Mm -hmm. And also, children that I've worked with, I would want to share with them, I've seen the difference that music has made from going and having no experience with music, not even knowing what a piano was, to the end of the year, working with them four times a week, they had better vocabularies, higher attention spans, and they were really engaged with the work that we were doing in the music class. And so I would want to share that for sure. And then also I would want to share with them the hard facts. And one big statistic that I love to share is there's a 20% higher graduation rate when you have music at your school curriculum. And so mm. that's really, that's, that's a lot because, you know, graduation, um, graduating is so important and that can set you up for a lot of success in life and having music in your school to help boost the number of kids that graduate is really vital. So yeah, as you're traveling around the country, is there anything that you're looking forward to seeing? Um, it just depends on where I am. I would love to go to Hawaii during my mm. year. Um, our Miss Hawaii this year at Miss America was so sweet. Mm. She planted a tree for every girl from, this, from the 50 states and in District of Columbia. And we all have a tree that we can go visit in Hawaii, and I would love to do that. Yeah. I would, uh, <laughs> I would love to see um, Niagara Falls again. I was actually able to go there when I was competing for Miss New York and mm -hmm. up in kind of Buffalo, New York. So there's a lot of different things, but um, I would say those are the two that I'm really looking forward to seeing. Excellent. And are, is there anything in your uh, suitcase that you can't do without? What are you taking with you? Can't do without my Beats headphones, the wireless <laughs> or Bluetooth that I need to hear my music. Um, and I also can't go without like a pad to scribble down my song lyrics in and things throughout mm. the year when songs come to me and different melodies come to me. And I think that's it. Are you planning on uh, having some original songs to collaborate with uh, with the kids that you're meeting? Oh, that would be interesting. Um, I've written songs for kids before, so I can definitely see that happening this year. Yeah. So I have a couple of quick questions before I let you go. Okay. This is uh, first best, last worst. First career you wanted to have when you were a kid? I wanted to be a famous singer like Whitney Houston. <laughs> You're still on that trajectory. Excellent. Yeah. <laughs> uh, best day as Miss New York? Mm. Oh, gosh. It was such a fun day. I went to a, a home for people with... Um, with disabilities and I was able to sing for them with an accompanist and there was one woman who came up and started singing a song acapella all by herself and it was so sweet and so cute and so that was a really touching moment for me as Miss New York. Uh, the last time you were inspired by a speech, concert, or movie? Mm. I really liked the movie, I watched it on the, air, on the airplane a while ago, The Greatest Showman. <laughs> Uh huh. It was really, it made me cry like three times. I'm not really sure why. I guess it was just so sweet seeing this man kind of follow his dreams and do all, work so hard for his family. So I'm a sucker for things like that. It was inspiring <laughs> to watch him, you know, someone work hard because I know what that feels like. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, and Hugh Jackman is an incredible showman in his yes, own right. he's great. <laughs> uh, worst mistake while performing? <laughs> not breathing. <laughs> you have to breathe to sing. <laughs> Excellent. Um, and lastly, uh, what are three goals for, for the next year for you? Number one is to stay true to myself throughout the year because there's so many people f pulling you from so many different directions. But I have my head on straight and I know what I want to accomplish personally and professionally and for this organization. So just keeping 
you know, true to myself. I want to make sure that we can increase our recruitment numbers and our volunteer numbers this year, and that's going to happen by just collaborating with the board and the people that are here to help me and, and really just being uh, approachable and personable when I go and meet people. Mm -hmm. And lastly, I really want to organize a benefit concert and I'm hoping to have maybe some celebrities and, and things come sing on it. Not sure on a location yet, but I would love for the proceeds to go to the Children's Miracle Network Hospitals since that's our national partner and I'm the national ambassador for them. So I would really like to make that happen. Excellent. Well, we look forward to seeing what you do this year. Nia Franklin, Miss America, thank you very much for being here and uh, enjoy your tour. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Bye. Bye. <laughs>